Welcome, Justin and Corey here, Day Trade Masters Week in Review, and what a week it was. Diving right in, Maker, uh, TP1, TP2, 11.5%, DYDX, TP2, 16.33%, uh, Fire Sale, TP3, Maker, 16.5%, QNT, 6%. Uh, TP2 for 14%, TP3 for 24%, TP4 for 35%, TP5 on DYDX for 48%. Uh, this is one that I tried building out another chart on on the pullback for TP6, 7, and 8. Uh, it hit all the targets, but I missed. I wasn't able to post it out fast enough. So it was 6, 7, and 8. Of course, it's not recorded in the totals for up to 68% profit on that guy before it started rich racing so uh we had a bunch more posted out and we changed the posting style here too so uh this is actually what i wanted to share so we're just adding more notes so we've been listening to people and the feedback and just adding a little bit more uh insight into what i'm doing with the trade setup how it's looking good and um yeah, using stop loss strategy and all that from there. So uh, if you're not already in there, make sure there's lots of value. So we only post so much to the public channels. Uh, check out the subscription if uh, you're ready to take things to the next level. So uh, nulls for 5%, trios for TP1 for 10%. I really like trios. I got back into that one as well. Uh, looking for another push, but uh Man, a lot of updates. We had the crash today, the Bitcoin crash, um, or this week from basically 22K to 16. And we just, we finished taking our profits. Um, Might have had a little bit in stop loss, but for the most part, out of the market, waited for the drop. And I believe we made 68% that day on the rebound. So that's where the, a lot of those TPs came from. DYDX was an example of one that just blew up on that rebound. And then Aon was one, uh, TP one through four that we hit for up to 21.56% in one day and 21 hours. So these are the weeks that I love being in crypto, even though it was pretty crazy as far as FTX and Alameda uh, and the Solana follow from there. So I guess a um, quick touch on that too. So after a deep dive, uh, it does look like um, the founder of FTX was in bed with the SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, or they're related. I can't remember the exact relationship with their advisors. They're very close. And it didn't work out very well for FTX. So they got caught not being able to or not holding enough funds to cover client accounts and are going through an extensive audit at this point in time. So uh, quite a bit of lashback. Crypto Bitcoin dropped 6K, basically, you know, 25, 30 percent in a matter of a couple of days. The alts had pretty pretty much all of them wrecked uh not all of them made lower lows compared to the last low in bitcoin so that was really good to see bitcoin took most of the brunt mm -hmm. uh the altcoins held strong that's where at dtm i mean we're loving it <laughs> like that was a great week um not so much on the long-term investor investments side of course but um that's where we can make up additional gains and then buy the bottom, you know, add to those long-term positions. I was buying DeFi coins. <laughs> I probably spent more than I should have, but uh, paid a laptop. I had to buy myself a new laptop. So I paid that in the afternoon too, which was awesome, you know, rather than having to dig cash out of investments that just took a 40% hit, right? So the Solana ecosystem was a big one. Uh, we're, there's still a lot more to be announced, but uh, the big concern that I saw was that Alameda and FTX owned 11% of the total Solana supply. So uh, their impact in the DeFi markets in general was less than 1%, but it was their holdings that was concerning. So those are like a tiered unlock until 2027 or 2030, I believe, but still it's a lot. So uh, what's going to happen with those funds? Likely going to be seized and go to the shareholders, I imagine. The employees, I hope uh, those guys get bailed out. It was really just incredible what people can do, um, either through negligence or intentional um, 
this to me, I, I not proof, not you know, official BTAF knowledge. This is totally Corey Gardner, in my personal opinion. Uh, there is more to it. I don't believe that uh, SBF was just that ignorant and negligent in his actions. I believe there was more to it. So we did see majority of the funds funneled out of FTX and Alameda two months before this happened. So I imagine that's where CZ had some red flags and that all transpired. Definitely check Twitter and the official news sources for more information on that. But uh, for the most part, you know, we're not shaken. Things move on. I was happy that this happened now rather than mid bear or mid bull market or at the end of the bull market. This is uh, it could be really devastating for a lot of people where, you know, most people on FTX are trading leverage. So I've got no pity for people that trade leverage and lose it all in the first place uh, just because it is gambling. Right. Um, you can be really good at it, but still it's not something I would recommend uh, for anyone, you know, at least spot markets. If we, our stop loss doesn't fill or whatever, we still got the tokens. We can transfer off exchange. We can hold those in our person. Can't do that with leverage. Uh, but that is also actually what DYDX is. I dug into it a little deeper and it's a decentralized leverage platform. So do your own research. Uh, definitely not saying to buy DY, DYDX. It's uh, not financial advice, but why I love DeFi and cryptocurrency because we are innovating all the time. And there was already replacements for one of the most massive exchanges in cryptocurrency. So um, onwards and upwards, I do believe this is a really good time to be looking to ladder in for long-term positions. You know, even if it's a swing term, I'm not saying two, three year hold, we'll see what happens if there's another lower low in Bitcoin, or if this is the final shakeout, uh, we'll see. There was Luna, there was FTX, you know, there's a lot going on. The only other thing I could see is something with uh, like USDT that could take the markets down further, but for the most part, I think there's a lot of cash floating around. You know, that's where the SEC, or not the SEC, um, the Fed in the uh, United, United States is still raising rates, but yeah, trying to tackle inflation and the economy keeps growing. So there's cash out there. That cash has to flow somewhere. Stock markets, mm, I don't think so. Real estate dropping like crazy, mm, I don't think so. Cryptocurrency, the freedom, the currency of the people, I believe. People are fed up. They've had enough and uh, they're ready for an alternative. So crypto provides just that. And uh, that's why I love crypto. That's why I'm here. So passion and solutions. Uh, anything on your end, Justin? I know I rambled on there pretty good. but <laughs> I love your rambles. No, I, we talk risk management all the time. Uh, with, with trading. But the biggest thing that I want to touch on with, with FTX, you know, setting that intention. If, if you're if you're getting into a long term hold, you know, get it off an exchange, not your keys, not your crypto. Set the intention for what you're doing with that. A lot of people say, well, you can't protect it with stop losses, things like that. But again, if your intention is to hang on to that long term, then put it away. Don't look at it. Spit in three, six months, a year, whatever you're setting that intention for that investment for, forget about it. We talk like couch cushion pennies and things like that. I think quite a few of us have a few of those stories where you bought something really low, forgot about it, come back to it, and then right on. But when you're trading, obviously you want stop losses, but you've set that intention for that trading portfolio. Those funds on that trading exchange, you have to understand the risk associated with that as well as the benefits, so the risk to reward. So long-term, get it off the exchange, set the intention for it. Your trading funds, that's what you're using to continue to grow. They are on an exchange. There is a potential risk. You know, definitely look into the exchange and the companies that you're, that you're dealing with. I've had quite a few people send me some new exchanges that are coming out that I just watch. I just watch for a while, see what they're about, see what they're doing. They're not established in this in the in the space. So to me, you know, my risk management, I'm looking at that as a higher risk if I'm going to trust them with my funds. So setting your intention and and with trading, I mean, we've got our stop losses to protect us for these drops that happened with FTX and Corey and I were on a call shortly after that drop happened and we were giddy. We were laughing because we were heavy in cash, 
And we got to add to long-term positions as well as play those relief rallies or, or if it's a, a reversal, you know, we get, we get to be a part of that and jump in closer to the bottom and, and get some amazing deals on some of these projects and start making some profits very quickly. So that's about it for me, Corey. Oh, it was amazing. I was just asking the universe. I was like, B and B, three hundred and eighty bucks. Mm, <laughs> give me a discount. Give me a discount. I locked it in at two seventy. It was awesome. So from there, got into some of the DeFi coins, and some of those rebounded quite nicely as well. So, um, the power I, I, with these central exchanges, what's uh, going on? DeFi. A bunch of them got caught. There was three or four or five of them that got caught right after this faking yep. their balances. So, of course, with crypto, we can see the large transactions go in and out. They deposit hundreds of millions of dollars, take a snapshot, and then withdraw that 10 minutes afterwards. You don't think people are going to catch on to that? Like, Blockchain. We can see all this. <laughs> yeah. So, Binance and KuCoin seem to be doing well. Um, I've heard some rumors from KuCoin. Of course, we don't pay attention to too much rumors, but we do want to keep them in mind you know sometimes they do come true um and just balance risk don't keep all your eggs in one basket that's DeFi space man like that's where i'm definitely looking um luna collapse was a bit of a shaker for me and just a reminder you know don't keep all your eggs in one basket because we got kucoin you know binance ftx accounts um i pulled all my funds from ftx a long time ago just because I didn't trade leverage. I made it, <laughs> I made some money. I lost most of it. I made a bit more. I'm like, I'm out. You know, it was the most stressful three days ever. And it was a 3X uh, Ethereum position. It was just, I don't know why people would want to do 100X leverage. But if there's a way, it's like all tools, right? Use it if it's going to work for you. But for most people, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the saying? 90% of... Yeah. Traders lose 90% of their funds or more in 90 days or less with leverage trading, right? So most instant liquidations, I mean, we, we refuse to even teach and train on it, even though we've got experience with it. It's not something I would ever recommend to anybody ever. So I like my old coins. I like my early positions, those couch cushion pennies that, you know, you, you buy a cup of coffee or you can buy, you know, a few hundred thousand of these tokens at the potential bottom. Yeah, it might go to zero, but we've seen coins do, like Shiba Inu, it did million percent gains. I mean, $5 at the right time can be life-changing. Rather than buying lottery tickets, you know, some of these coins are going to go to nothing, of course. But if you do your research, find the right projects. Of course, we cover a lot of these DeFi projects in our DGEM report, included with the DeFi course. Uh that's where $100 could change your life, right? So well worth taking a look at. Um, I do it professionally. Of course, we've got some insight into what to do, what not to do, what to look for, and a lot of the tools and strategies that have worked for us. But of course, the industry keeps evolving. So we've got the course. Take a look. Um, that's it for me today. Uh, definitely <laughs> a good time to be shuffling some funds out of your centralized exchanges if you have them on there. Um, I keep at least a small percentage off exchange just for long-term positions, just for if I need an extra few hundred bucks or a couple grand or whatever. In an emergency situation, we saw USDC, USDT being delisted and pulled from deposits and withdrawals on the Solana network on a lot of exchanges too, right? So this isn't the end of the shakeout. There's going to be some repercussions from, you know, I think the markets got their spook and are likely, you know, that's it for now, but it's going to take years for Alameda and FTX to go through the, the process of liquidating those assets, all those Solana tokens that are locked, right? Hopefully it goes to the right place um, rather than, you know, into the pockets of SPF and whoever he was working with, but the employees, the clients, the people that were used in the exchange, hopefully. Well, Mount Gox, uh, if you're not familiar with that story, they unlocked and they get a lot of those tokens, a lot of the Bitcoin back, I shouldn't say tokens, a lot of their Bitcoin that was seized and locked in Mount Gox is being trickled out now to those people that were holding those accounts. So time will tell. It takes time for sure. Um, 
it can feel like ages, but be patient. If you are, if your funds are caught, just hang in there. Don't do anything drastic. You know, we've recovered from crazier things in crypto. It's not the end. This is just the beginning, right? And uh, if you got to start fresh, it's got to be done. It can be done very quickly. I mean, I've recovered from some of the worst <laughs> economic drops in my lifetime in three months or less. So, of course, it's not easy. It sucks starting over, but there's no better place to be doing it than crypto markets and we can always build back better you know there's there's lessons in all of these if, if we got if you got caught by this ftx thing these drops you know shake it off it's not over there's always a balance nothing can go down forever nothing can go up forever this is part of the risk management and, and part of the risk that we take while we're investing in trading but we can build back better. There's a lesson there. Spend some time, learn what you need to do, implement that into your rules and strategy and just push forward, recover and bounce back harder than ever. Yeah, we continue to evolve as people, as humans, as beings, right? So you have to evolve to be the person that can manage those large portfolios. Myself, I'm talking to myself just as much as anyone, right? Like, the guy to manage a $5,000 portfolio is very different than the guy to manage a $5 million portfolio and so on then forth, right? There's all, it's going to be the balance. You'll learn, hang in there, stay consistent. And of course, stay tuned. Uh, let us know in the comments what you liked best. If there's anything you want us to cover in future episodes, we could definitely review and discuss. I love these topics. Uh, we are definitely going to be um, spending more time with the Friday live calls. So we've got every single Friday at AUA, Ask Us Anything, as well as live training, uh, lots of content, giveaways, stuff like that. So make sure to hop on, sign up, <clears throat> stay in the loop, and uh, stay consistent. So um, that's it for me today. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll chat with you soon. Any final closing words, Justin? Trade safe. <laughs> Continue <laughs> to learn. You know, hit us up, please. We love the comments, love the feedback. So looking forward to connecting. Awesome. See you same time, same place next week. Bye. Yeah.